Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to do something a little bit different and a little bit exciting. So we're going to go to a country that has never featured on the channel before. I have come across beers from this country before, but never at a time when I would have been able to take them back home with me. But thankfully that has now changed and it was quite random to find one of this brewery's beers here in Hong Kong. But the brewery behind this beer is a very well respected name when it comes to craft beer there. They have done a lot of different styles, they've been very prolific over their existence and this beer is a style that they are supposed to do very well. It's one of their bigger releases and it's also a style that I quite enjoy too. And it's got a twist to it that I think you could only find in uh, this particular region of the world. So needless to say I'm very very curious to see what this beer is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So yeah, for this review then, for the very first time, we are going to go to Serbia. We're going to go to Belgrade, Beograd, the capital city, and we're going to have a look at my first beer from Pivovara Dogma, or Dogma Brewery as they also go by. So this particular beer is called Serbian Barrels Number no. 1. It comes in at 11.5% ABV, and this one is an imperial stout aged with cardamom and cocoa nibs, and then barrel aged in Serbian vignac barrels, which are basically Serbian cognac, which is a grape distillate, of course, or a wine distillate, however you want to describe it. So uh, yeah, this one, I actually can't remember where I got this particular beer, but I did get this one here in Hong Kong. But I first encountered the Dogma beers over in uh, Croatia, in fact. So yeah, those beers I saw over there, but unfortunately I couldn't bring any cans back with me because I just didn't have to check luggage and things like that. But yeah, the next time I go down to Croatia, I will make sure that I have a checked bag that I can bring some stuff back. Or if I go to Serbia, I would quite like to go down there and see what it's like. But certainly cool to feature a Serbian brewery for you here on the channel for the first time. And these guys are probably the most recognized Serbian craft brewery outside of Serbia itself just now. But yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see what it has in store for us. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Pivovara Dogma, Dogma Brewery. Very first time we're trying one of their beers, as I mentioned. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated and remember you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So go in there, use the little search bar, put in your hometown, state, county, province, whatever you like. If I've reviewed beers from the area that you search for they will pop up. Failing that you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in a playlist that I'll make for the Serbian beers because very first time we're doing a Serbian beer on the channel too as I said. Hopefully not the last but do check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well and uh, there are some very interesting things on the channel so I do recommend that you do that. But yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes for the first time then for me to tell you a little bit about Dogma. So Dogma, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Belgrade, Belgrade, the capital city of Serbia and the company was founded back in 2016. So the two men behind this company are childhood friends. There's Vladimir Stojkovic who comes from a background in food technology and then Mladen Merdovic, who comes from a background in economics and marketing. So apparently during his master's degree, Vladimir did a project on root beer, and this really helped spark his interest in beer as a drink and exploring this further. But after his graduation, he actually worked in a distillery as chief of production, but his interest in beer continued to grow through his own research. And he was one of the co-founders of the Miners Pub in Belgrade, which opened in 2014 and was one of the first craft beer pubs in the whole of Serbia and it was apparently a very good one sadly it's closed now but he also started to import some beers and begin home brewing his own beer as well and he was brewing in a small apartment and then in a friend Boschko's basement but there are several sources that say M Mladen basically tried the beers one day and then turned up another day with a bunch of bitcoin and proclaimed that they should open their own brewery together and that's what they did so that was the birth of Pivovara Dogma, Dogma Brewery but the brewery is based in an old sugar factory and can be found in the south
southwestern part of the city next to the Saba Valley and Ada Signalia. Uh, Island, Ada Signalia Island, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. But they opened the brewery and on site taproom in 2017, and apparently a number of the employees that they now have were recruited from doing the research projects uh, at university at the brewery and they were just offered jobs to stay on. But over the years, they've continued to expand the brewery infrastructure, and apparently in 2022, they produced around 550. Thousand litres and probably that will be uh, a bit bigger now but uh, they've started up their barrel program quite recently as well and they are working to expand that and uh, we'll just need to see how that progresses over the next little while but as of July 2024 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 120 different kinds of beer according to Untapped and like I mentioned to you earlier they've done a variety of different styles and they are starting to get their beers outside of Serbia a little bit more which is definitely nice to see so um, yeah let's leave it at that for the history section if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the rate beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done so yeah let's go on and have a little look at the beer itself so the uh, artwork on this one is actually quite different from what you'll normally find from Dogma Brewery. Dogma Brewery have this really distinctive kind of cartoony style of artwork that you'll see on their cans. They are really, really nicely done. But you can see this beer has a plain uh, black sort of wax top on it, but it seems to have been nicely finished. Uh, and it says on the back here, an imperial style with cardamom and cocoa nibs. And then obviously it's been aged in Serbian vignac barrels, which are yeah, basically Serbian cognac barrels. The Balkans is actually very well known for its wine. Um, I had a Slovenian flatmate at university, Mr. Yerni, and uh, he was a lovely guy. But the Slovenian wine was pretty damn impressive, I have to say. A lot of good beer from Slovenia as well these days. So, um, yeah, really nice look, nicely presented. This one, as we said, 11.5% ABV. Let's get this guy open and see what it's gonna have in store for us. I'm very, very curious about this one. We just need to see. Oh, I think I've got it. There we go. Ah, and it seems it's got a cork as well. So let's just get this. We might need to pause the video just while we get this thing open, unless we can be quite quick. Wasn't quite expecting that. Double security, I guess we could say. Hmm. Yeah, the cork doesn't want to cooperate. Let me just pause the recording and we'll come back in a wee second and I'll pop the cork on video. All right, guys, we've secured the thing. Let's see if we can get it out. Let's see. There we are. Nice little bit of smoke on the opening there. And that should be us. So let's get the guy out into the glass and see what we have. I should have pointed out as well, this is a big 750 milliliter bottle. My Sunday morning beer. Before I go out and do a little bit of exploring. Um, but it says that this one was brewed on the 6th of April 2021 and it's barreled uh, on 28th of May 2021 and it's bottled then on the on April 2022, so it's been aged just under a year in these Serbian vignac barrels, so should be quite nice. I love cognac barrel aging, so if Serbian vignac is similar to that, I'm probably gonna enjoy this too. But you can see that the beer has poured this lovely um, dark ebony rosewood color, and it's come in with just under a half finger of a frothy, I would say medium, tan head there. If you let if the camera's going to focus on this, hopefully it does. I think it's focusing on the barrel a little bit more. Let me see, will it focus? Nah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know how well you can see that, but yeah, the um, head on this one, lovely kind of medium sized bubbles at the surface there, then foamier ones uh, further up uh, the head. That looks very, very nice. But uh, yeah, lovely head on this one, and that's gonna retain quite well, I would think. That suggests the beer has a little bit of wheat in it. Does it say anything about that? No, it doesn't. Well, maybe in Serbian. Uh, 
No, it just says barley malt actually, so this could well be an old school RIS in the base, we'll need to see. But yeah, lovely dark ebony rosewood colour as I said. Remember, the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any badly agent that you do or adjuncts you put into the beer will affect the colour as well. But when it comes to black beers, it's quite difficult to uh, to change the colour of these because of the presence of that dark black malt in them. But um, yeah, in terms of what you'd expect appearance-wise from an Imperial Stout, nothing particularly surprising about this one. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass. And as you can see, a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there. I think we've said everything we need to about the appearance of this one. Let's go on to the aroma and see what it's going to give us. I'm very curious about this. Oh, that's different. That is different. It smells very, very nice. And of course, you can get the barrel in this one. It's the Vignac, if that's what it is that I'm picking up. It's actually, come, it comes across as a bit more like rich and almost brighter than the French cognac barrels that I've come across before. So that's really interesting. Um... Yeah, the cognac barrels with this one are, uh, are the Vignac, I need to make sure I say the right thing. Um, it's really interesting, this beer actually has quite a deep aroma and it almost clears the tubes a little bit, it must be the cardamom that's, uh, that's doing that in here. But um, yeah, this is really, really nice but quite different in terms of its aroma. It does smell as if it's like an old school RIS. Um, in the base, but very, very rich aroma. When we sugar it up, you get more and more of the barrel out of this one. So yeah, you can, um, yeah. So when you get the, um, the barrel of this one, you can smell that lovely, smooth American oak out of this beer. Um, well, not American oak, sorry, it's European oak probably. I don't know if you probably get Balkan oak um, these barrels will be very, very unique, and that's quite a cool thing for Dogma to do and have this Serbian barrel series as they're going to. But yeah, the European oak, of course, is a little bit drier than the American oak. I don't know why I said American oak, but the European oak that you get out of this one, you can smell that lovely smoothness out of it, the little bit of vanilla, but you've also got that nice uh, just kind of dryness in there. It's almost got a little bit of spiciness to it as well. But the Vignac, like I say, it comes across quite similar to cognac, but it just feels a little bit richer almost, a little bit more red winey, I would say. Um, yeah, it's just, it's got a little bit more of a raisiny and plummy character within it. Obviously, cognac, vignac is a grape distillate, but it just comes across richer, definitely. That smells really nice. As I say, I've never really encountered this before, but um, yeah, I think this one will be very, very interesting. So on the um, on top of that, you start to get the uh, malty side of the beer. So you've got the roasty, toasty, well-fired bread crust coming out of this one. You can smell that in there. But above that, yeah, you're starting to get um, the other things as well. So there's a wee touch of like, there's a wee touch of a kind of rye bready character in there for sure. Wholemeal bound bread. And I'm also getting some nice kind of cakey notes out of this one too. So yeah, the kind of cakey side of this beer, I think is, it's got like a kind of, it's got a wee bit of a Christmas puddingy note to it, this one. And I think that's the presence of the cardamom in this one that's, uh, that's doing that. So yeah, you have this kind of sort of mix of chocolate sponge and Christmas pudding. My dad always loved Christmas pudding in February for his birthday. My mum used to make it, um, but yeah. It has this kind of Christmas puddingy type note to it, so it's like a brandy soaked, um, yeah, like a kind of brandy soaked chocolate brownie sort of thing in it. But then you're also getting the cocoa nibs in this one, and the cocoa nibs, of course, are going to give you that little bit of kind of powdery dryness. And then you are getting the straight up chocolate out of this one. So for me, there's quite a little bit of like an 80 90 percent cocoa chocolate coming out of this beer, which I do quite like. Um, and then yeah, 80-90% cocoa which is great. 
and yeah on top of that you start to get a wee bit of like brown sugar there's a little bit of like treacle and molasses coming out of this one um you know that highly caramelized brown sugar there's a little bit of toasty brown sugar in there as well and um yeah the way that all of that goes together is really really quite nice so i, I think this one the aroma is quite interesting but i think we're going to pick up more of the little subtleties and stuff that it has when we actually taste the beer rather than trying to get too much of it out of the um out of the aroma so yeah the way that that goes together i think is uh, it's really really nice so yeah aroma wise this is very very good i'm really curious about this as i say i don't know if there's too much else to say about the malty and yeasty side of the beer but we'll get more in the aroma on the hoppy side of things the beer does have a degree of green component to it like you get a bit of earthiness out of it you get a little bit of herbal character of course but you do have to remember the imperial stout is not the most hop forward style of beer in the first place um, and because this is barrel aged quite a little bit of the hoppy character will have dropped out of it so yeah that's worth bearing in mind but certainly some of it's still here we could age this beer even more and that effect would become more pronounced and of course the other thing you'll get if you age these beers a little bit more is you get more and more of this kind of silky uh, mouthfeel out of them so yeah for me the yeah the backbone of this uh, of the hoppy side of things is the earthy kind of herbal character. I wonder if it's Galena that's in this because it comes across, it has got quite a bit of floral aromaticity to it which makes me think, yeah, Galena. The other big hop to use in Imperial Stouts like this would be William Echt because they'll give you the nice kind of berryish characters that you want. But yeah, um, good little bit of floral aromatic spice to this one still. Um, you get a nice little bit of kind of more zesty grassiness in there too. Those are definitely still visible in this beer or observable I should say. Um, and then yeah you've got the actual fruity side of things to it as well so yeah for me the fruity side of this beer you've got a love you've obviously got all the kind of fruity characters from the vignac the cognac like notes in there but yeah there's a sharper kind of raisiny note to this one there's a big oily kind of juicy plum um yeah sharper raisin big oily juicy plum and then yeah i would say underneath that there's like a little bit of a datey kind of note for sure figs you know blackberries black currants um all of these sorts of things coming out of this beer which are obviously very very nice um yeah aroma wise i think that's it yeah blackberry black currant fig raisin plums prunes all of these sorts of things it's a lovely smelling beer this one as i say i think there's more going to come out of this in the flavor then uh, we're actually getting straight up out of the aroma but yeah as i always say do take a little bit of time to look at that aroma before you get stuck into the beer but it is time for us to try this one now so yeah this one is the serbian barrels number one and 11.5 percent serbian vignac barrel aged imperial stout with cocoa nibs and cardamom and i get into it my very first beer from uh serbia here on the channel let's get stuck in slanja skull cheers or as they say in serbian Giviali. Ooh, that's very nice. First observation, very, very smooth. Imperial stout. Um, does give you um, the cardamom in this one does give you a wee bit of spice into the aftertaste, particularly at the back of the palate. And it is an old school, it, you can tell it is a proper, old, it is a kind of old school RIS um, in the base recipe with this one. The thing, there's a few ways you can play with stouts basically. What you can do is you can do a double mash, which is going to give you that big, thick, sort of sticky mouthfeel. You can also play about with the mouthfeel by, um, for example, using a bit more wheat or a bit more oats or even putting lactose in the stout to give you that big sort of thick creaminess, that's another way to do it. You can do the barrel aging, of course, where you're going to sacrifice a little bit of the mouthfeel to give you these big infused flavours. That's what's kind of going on with this one. And um, yeah, is that it? Yeah, you can do um, 
yeah, double mashes and longer warp boils, stuff like that. So if you do the longer warp boil, of course, you're going to get these more chewy, leathery, brown sugary notes out of this one. I don't think this one has had that, um, but isn't then again, it's not a very brown forward, uh, brown sugar forward imperial stout where you'd be able to notice that too much anyway. But what I will say is this is really pretty, it's a very enjoyable stout this one, it's definitely a nice share and I'm glad that I'm going to be sharing this one of course. But um, yeah, the flavour of this one I think is uh, is really really nice. Proper old school RIS, the, the Vignac barrels give it an interesting edge and it's got that wee touch of spice from the, uh, the cardamom as well. Um, so yeah, let's just break this beer down then and describe it for you even more in depth. But what you can tell straight away from this one is that it is very good quality. So that is a good, that hopefully should be a good indicator of what Dogma are all about. And I've heard good things about their other beers as well. So, um, yeah. middle third of your palate then with this beer the backbone you get that lovely smooth oaky character that i was talking about in there i find the oak in this beer is actually quite dry but i'm not sure that could be pronounced a little bit by the adjuncts that it's going in because cardamom if i remember rightly when i've had stouts with cardamom in it, they do dry the beer out a little bit but yeah you've got that kind of drier oaky character in the base as you move a little bit further forward you've got that nice kind of um you've got that nice little vanilla type quality coming out of the beer and then above that you have a nice uh, you have this kind of spirit layer in this one so the vignac let's see yeah the vignac in this one it doesn't feel quite as oily as the cognac um, barrel aged imperial stouts that I've had before. One of my favourite ones was Necessary Evil from Thornbridge in England, the cognac barrel version. That was beautiful. Beautiful beer. But then again, I think that one had a bunch of oats and stuff in it as well, so the actual beer itself was just thicker. But yeah, the vignac comes across as a little bit more... It has the cognac type flavour to it, but it comes across as being like a little bit sort of pruney, it's got a little bit more dryness to it, but also a little bit more of a red winey character to it. So, yeah, the way all of that goes together in this one, I think, is quite interesting. Um, yeah, like, definitely more red winey cognac, but yeah, a little bit more dry, pruney, and um, black currenty almost as well. I think that's a fair way to describe the sort of spirit layer in this beer and the kind of fruits that are emanating from that. Um, but yeah, above that spirit layer, of course, above the vignac layer, so you've got the wood, the vignac, you start to get the actual beer side of things. So you've got that roasty, toasty, well-fired bread crust coming out of this one. There's not too aggressive, it's actually quite smooth. So yeah, roasty, toasty, well-fired bread crust in there. And yeah, above that, you get a layer of uh, rye bread, so yeah, roasty, toasty, well fired bread crust, the rye bready character above that, and then you've got the wholemeal brown bready you note know, in there, so yeah, rye bread, wholemeal brown bread, and then yeah, you do get a little bit, there is a little bit of a more almost toasty bread character sitting on top of that, so yeah, you've got a few bready layers in this one, coming out of that bready character, I think that's where the cardamom is kind of sitting, you do get that sort of spicy almost slightly, I always find cardamom taste a little bit like marzipan to me. So yeah, within that bready layer, you start to get the cardamomy, marzipani type quality coming out of it. So yeah, the way that that goes together, I think, is uh, is really, really nice. But yeah, above the bready layers, you start to get the, the chocolate notes. So at the back of that um, middle third of your palate, you start to get the cocoa nibs. You can feel that dry, powdery, cocoa nibby quality. And do remember, sweeter flavours come out further forward on your palate, more dry and bitter flavours come out further back. So yeah, you've got that nice kind of, um, you do have that nice, um, more roasty, toasty chocolate. You've almost got a little bit of a charred chocolate as well, mixing in with the cocoa nibs at the back of that middle third of your palate. But as you move further forward, the chocolate sort of mellows out a little bit.
yeah so the chocolate sort of mellows out a little bit and you get um it mellows out a little bit and you get this kind of um you get a sort of 80 percent cocoa chocolate at the back and then as you move further by the time you reach the kind of front of that middle third of your palate you're getting a wee bit of um a more 60-ish percent cocoa chocolate and within that chocolatey there you are getting a wee bit of nuttiness as well i would say so yeah that's quite interesting now above that there is a little bit of brown sugar to this one but i actually find this um, stout is a little bit more like chocolatey and cocoa nibby leaning which would make sense but yeah let's just have a wee look at the brown sugary notes and then i think we're done with the middle third of the palette So yeah, maybe above that um, chocolate layer, there's like a little circle in the middle of your palate. Now it has a kind of leathery, brown sugary base to it. And maybe in the dead center of your palate, there's like a little bit of, um, yeah, maybe there's a little bit of, um, I would say maybe toffee or Werther's original butter candy butterscotch sort of thing. There is a little bit of brown sugary character to this one, but not really all that much because you can feel the cardamom just kind of jumping its way um, out of the beer, like on the back, on the border regions of the different thirds of your palate there. So that's really quite interesting uh, with this beer to see how it goes. So yeah, this is quite a dry and um, roasty toasty imperial stout for me. I would definitely say that. Um, but yeah, I think we've covered the middle third of the palette at this stage, so we can move on and have a look at the, the other sides of the beer. So, um, border region between middle and back third of your palette, you get a little bit of that bready build up in there. You can feel, um, the other thing maybe I'd actually, there's maybe a little bit of a kind of chocolatey sponge cakey character between the wholemeal brown bread and the... Um, the chocolatey layer that I was talking about, I would say that potentially. But yeah, the border region between middle and back third of your palate, you get a little bit of bready build up in there. Pardon me, you've got the brown bread, the, the kind of almost rye bready character in the base, the wholemeal brown bread above that, then a sort of chocolatey sponge character there, and then some of the cocoa nibby dryness there, the kind of charred chocolate above that. But yeah, the base of that back third of your palate, you can feel the woody side of the beer in there. So yeah, you've got that nice kind of woody, character coming out and it feels a little bit drier above that you've got the kind of um yeah you've got the sort of cognac -y, vignac -y layer in there which again feels a little bit drier and almost slightly earthy as well then the rye bready bread crust is there again feeling a bit drier the rye bready layers above that and that feels a little bit lighter and more airy and slightly drier the wholemeal brown bready layers above that it feels a little bit lighter and more airy and drier and then you've got that kind of chocolate spongy type character above uh, that one which again um, feels a little bit lighter more dry and things and you can feel some of the charred chocolate and cocoa nibby character just creeping over the top of that and then yeah you have um this little bit of yeasty character sitting above it so let's focus on that yeasty character for now so the yeasty side of this beer for me it's um, it's quite interesting because it's almost like a sweet Christmas puddingy note in the middle. Then around the edge you get like a sweet oily rye bread, and then the very very edge of the yeasty character is a little bit more, yeah, like a toasty bread crust or something like that. So yeah, Christmas pudding, sort of phenolic, brandy soaked Christmas pudding in the middle, a sweet oily rye bread around the outside, then a toasty well-fired bread crust just rounding it all off so yeah the way that that goes together in this beer is, is pretty interesting so definitely yeah the back third of your palate you can feel the flavor is taller then as you move further forward into the middle third of your tongue it just kind of condenses down and squashes together but i think at that we can say we've covered the malty and yeasty side of the beer let's go to the hoppy side of things then um, back corners of the palate you do feel a good little bit of earthiness to this one and as you move further forward the earthiness does spread forward as well then there's a wee touch of herbal character and you can feel a little touch of almost pine resin in here as well 
So that does make me think American hops have been used in this. The most likely candidate would be Galena or um, Williamette, something like that. But, of course, you can use some others like Chinook. Uh, Chinook will work in an Imperial Stout too. So, and it will give you pine resin normally. So, yeah, there is a little touch of an almost pine resin-y note lingering in this one. We are drinking this beer um, when it's been in the bottle just over two years. And that is still there, of course. You could age it a bit longer and lose even more of the hoppy character. But yeah, um, as you move further forward, it gets a little bit more floral and aromatic. Then round the front curve of the tongue, the beer is a little bit lighter and more uh, grassy as well, I would say. But let's look at that front third of the palate and the fruity side of things then to round off. So border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get that nice little bit of bready build up in there. You can feel the brown bread in the base, the kind of, well, the, the rye bread in the base, the brown bread in the middle, and the more kind of like sponge cakey character on the top. Wee bit of that charred chocolate cocoa nibby character there. But the base of the front third of your palate, you've got the nice kind of European oak in there. It feels a little bit smoother at the front. You've got the vignac layer on top of that, which actually feels really bright and juicy, plummy, and things like that on the front third of your palate. And then above that, toasty well fire bread crust, the brown bread, the, the rye bread, sorry, the brown bread, and then a bit of the chocolate sponge, and then you can feel a bit of the kind of more smooth, dark chocolate, like a, maybe a 50, 60% uh, cocoa chocolate just sitting there. And then you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer. So let's look at that juicy fruity bubble just to round off. So yeah, for me, the pretty side of this beer is kind of what we picked up in the aroma. I mean, if you go to the back of that oily bubble, there's a little bit of like a plummy character to it. Underneath that, there's a wee bit of prune and a little bit of date in the base. Uh, so yeah, plums, prunes, a little bit of date almost. And then, um, I don't know about sultanas, maybe a tiny little bit of sultana and pear in there. But yeah, as you move further forward into the middle, of that front third of your palate. It's more about kind of figs. There's a nice big juicy figgy character to it. And then yeah, into the front half of the front third of your palate, it's a little bit more about like black currants and maybe just a little bit of sharper blackberry behind the front kind of tip of the tongue there. So um, yeah, the fruity side of this one, I think is quite, uh, is quite nice actually, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think the fruity side of this one and the way that the difference of the barrel, those are probably the highlights for me of this one. The cardamom isn't sort of overpowering, but cardamom, I have to admit, is not my favourite flavour to have in an imperial stout, to be honest with you. Um, I would maybe have enjoyed a little bit more focus on the, the chocolate and the cocoa nibby side of things. But yeah, I guess it's about balancing out the spicy, uh, the kind of more spicy herbally notes of the cardamom and the cocoa nibs in this one so i can see it, it does work and it's an enjoyable beer but that's just my kind of personal preference but yeah i think this is a really interesting beer it's very high quality you can tell that and i have enjoyed trying this one this is a nice introduction to serbian craft beer so yeah good stuff from uh from dogma that's the one and you know maybe that's another point to make about this one for a lot of people that drink this beer and they will drink it abroad having the cardamom in there maybe takes the focus away from the flavor of the barrel and that's the interesting thing about this beer for me the fact that it's serbian vignac which i've never tried so no idea what kind of barrel effects i have having something like cardamom in there maybe just takes away a bit of that doing an old school imperial stout or a straight up barley wine or something like that where you can really focus on the character of the barrel that's probably something that i would think about for this particular series going forward if i was dogma brewery so yeah if somebody from the brewery watches that would be a little bit of advice i would say for this uh, series don't put too many adjuncts in these beers because people will be more curious about the effects of the barrel than the uh, the adjuncts themselves or at least release a, an adjunct version and a kind of a straight up raw version of the beer. I think that's a good thing to do. But yeah, um, on the uh, mouthfeel then, just to round off. So this is actually a fairly light Imperial Stout, but you don't feel that it's lacking in any way because of its lighter mouthfeel. Um, yeah, I would say, for me, it's kind of top end of mid-bodied. 
carbonation is quite smooth on this one. It's got quite a, que a clean and kind of wet mouth feel. Um, there's a lot of dryness out of this one and a bit of bitterness. You could easily conflate these together. So the beer kind of feels as if it has a little bit of, um, yeah, it sort of feels like it could be slightly higher in, a in IBU. I mean, probably about 80 IBUs. Does it say on the thing there? I, I would, yeah, I would say 80 IBUs. It, to me, it feels like it's at least 80 with both the dryness and the spiciness of the cardamom, the roastiness of the black malt, and then a bit of the bitterness from the hops. So I think 80 IBUs is fair for this one. Like we said, the barrel gives you a bit of dryness, but also the fruity sweetness above that. The malty base in this one does have a little bit of bitterness itself and a wee bit of dryness and things like that too. Um, mainly a kind of old school RIS this beer like I said and then yeah you've got that lovely little bit of fruitiness both from the hoppy character of the beer and from the barrel itself but all in all a really interesting beer this one a very interesting introduction to Serbian craft beer but it'd be cool to try some of their IPAs and uh, their laggers and other stuff like this going forward we really went for the kind of you know big bold end of the spectrum for our introduction to dogma brewery so yeah if you're watching from serbia let me know your favorite beers from these guys that i should check out in future reviews and do let me know some other serbian breweries that i should look at as well but i think we can leave it at that for this one so this was the serbian barrels number one an 11.5 percent serbian vignac cognac uh barley uh, imperial stout uh with cardamom and cocoa nibs in it from dogma brewery pivovara uh, P uh pivana I forget the word, uh, but Dogma Brewery in Belgrade, Beograd, in Serbia. So, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Dogma Brewery. Give me some Serbian brewery recommendations, and I will catch you guys in the next review. Slanja, Skol, cheers, and Jiveli. Ciao just now.